Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, August 2nd, 2024. Weekend starter here as we got some primetime games, West Coast late night games to get into. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today, where you agree, where you disagree. All is welcome. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up in PNC, as you can see behind me, 640 Eastern Time, Arizona Diamondbacks, Pittsburgh Pirates, Luis Ortiz, on the hill for the Pirates. Brandon Fett on the hill for the D-backs. D-backs minus 130 road favorites, eight in the hook being the total. Both teams coming in over 500, playing good ball of late. We got the Arizona side winning three straight, seven of their last eight. Pittsburgh, two games over 500, winning three of their last four. They got Ortiz on the hill. If you've been watching the show, he's been a guy we've been back in the 25-year-old Dominican. No losses on his record going all the way back to early May. He's 5-2 and two on the season, sub-3 ERA. He is back-to-back -back versus Arizona. He went five innings, five hits, three earned. Okay start last time out. He's up against Fat here, also back-to-back -back against the Pirates lineup. 24-year-old out of uh, Bellarmine College there. Back-to-back -back versus the Pirates. He gave up five earned his last time out. He did have a solid four-game stretch before that. Overall, guys, I um, think it comes down to the price point here. And with Ortiz on the hill getting a plus price at home, I think the home dog is barking, leading us off here. We're on the Pirates, plus 115. We'll head to the 7 o'clock Eastern hour. Up next, AL East matchup here with the Yankees hosting the Blue Jays. Kevin Gosman on the hill for the Jays. Marcus Stroman going for the Bronx Bombers, commanding a minus 160 price tag, total of nine. A uh, little juice towards the over on that number in the overnight market. We get the Blue Jays nine games under 500. They've lost two straight. Both teams off of an off day here. Gosman, the 34-year-old out of LSU. Go Tigers, 4-4 four, four ERA on the season. He only went four innings, giving up seven earned with five walks last time facing the Yankees. So he's had trouble against this lineup. We get Marcus Stroman, the former first rounder out of Duke. Three earned runs in four innings in that same series against the Blue Jays. So not a great start for Stroman, not getting lengths there. One thing I've noticed here, guys, one, the Yankees, they smash righties. The Yankees are also the hottest lineup in baseball out of the All-Star break. So not looking to necessarily go against them offensively. They've also won five straight games, now 20 games over 500. Just don't like that 60 cents with Stroman on the hill. Instead, look at this total. I mean, we get nine plus 100, risk 100 to just risk 100 to win 100 on the over here and sure enough we get the Bronx Bombers seven straight overs 10 of their last 11 games to the over and don't look now but the Blue Jays are on a insane 16 and two over runs since July 10th so we're talking about a whole lot of over caches here I think we get there again I mean hitters ballpark Friday night we're likely to get a kind of a a lineups for both for both squads here Nine plus 100 to the over, Blue Jays and Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Next one up, 8 o'clock Eastern hour, Tampa Bay Rays, Houston Astros. You see Kikuchi, the lefty, going for the Astros. Yes, he was traded. Uh, his first start here for Houston, came in at a minus 160 price tag. He's up against the high prospect, Shane Baz, going for the Rays. We're seeing minus 160, that's Houston is the home favorite, total of eight. Rays come in over 500. However, Interestingly, they were sellers at the at the trade deadline and Fangraphs had an article that no no team fell further in, in terms of like, you know, projecting out their playoff odds than the Rays. We'll see how they get going after the trade deadline. Definitely did lose some pieces there. Now, in this spot, they got the 25 year old Baz on the hill. He's been kind of, you know, injury prone. But when he's been out there, he's been pretty good. And he was stretched out to six innings last time out. He was throwing, you know, 96, 97 miles per hour. He's had four starts on the season, 3-6 ERA. He's been good. And he's up against Kakushi here. Of course, the Japanese-born pitcher. It's his first start with Houston. Always a little bit tricky handicap with guys making their first start with their new team. And he really hasn't had a great season. I mean, just under a five ERA. He does have 130 strikeouts when you watch him pitch. I mean, he looks good doing so. He just, you know, at times hasn't been all that great. And sure enough, of late, 16 earned runs his last 19 innings pitched. I don't really like betting on guys that are struggling like that. This is kind of a, a difficult one, a tricky handicap. But getting plus 140 on the Rays, listing Baz as the starter, I think it's a little bit... uh. 
a little bit too much here, respect towards Kikuchi and the Strohs. So we'll jump on the Rays as a pretty sizable dog here, plus 140 listing Baz as the starter. All right, we got West Coast games up next. 940 Eastern, 640 local time in the Coliseum. It's the Oakland A's and the LA Dodgers. Gavin Stone going for the Dodgers, committing a minus 150 price tag up against Joey Estes for the Athletics, eight and a half being the total. The A's come in 20 games under 500, although playing pretty good baseball, winning four of their last six, six of their last nine. They are just a game under 500 at home. So they've had some home road splits here in terms of the win loss column being positive, looking to bet on them at home. And the Dodgers, what, 63 and 46 on the season. Both teams uh, off day yesterday, I believe. They have lost two two straight, and they've lost four or five. So they've been scuffling a little bit of late. And their starter, Gavin Stone, he's a guy, he's a 25-year-old out of Central Arkansas, fifth-round pick, not necessarily thought of as a high prospect. And sure enough, he's given up four earned in three of his last four starts, not really getting depth. And when you go look at like how many innings he's pitched this year compared to years past, he's already at his hot, his career high in terms of threshold of pitches thrown here. Wonder if kind of he's getting to that point where, you know, the arm's a little bit tired, look to go against him. That's what I have in my notes. And sure enough, it's his spot in the rotation. So that's the way I'm kind of looking to go after this one. He's up against Estes here, the starter for the A's. He's got huge home road splits to the positive. I mean, his ERA is just 2-1 in the Coliseum. In fact, his last 27 home innings, just four earned runs allowed. So we're going to look to ride that hot hand, at least the hot hand in the Coliseum. And the A's, since the All-Star break, top five lineup offensively. So we get, get the, uh, the A's plus 139 here, risk 100 to win 139. That's the home dog again barking late night with the athletics over the Dodgers. One game left. A reminder, if you could comment below, it does help the algorithm, guys. Anything is welcome. Your MLB picks. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. Hey, if you like premium picks, check them out. Drew Martin, wagertalk.com. We got 940 Eastern time. Last game up. Pacific Northwest. It's the Seattle Mariners hosting the Philadelphia Phillies. We get uh, Tyler Phillips on the hill for the Phillies. Brian Wu on the hill for the M's. Mariners minus 115, home favorites, seven in the hook being the total. Philadelphia comes in 22 games over 500, but losing four straight games. Now, it's an interesting dichotomy here because the team hasn't been winning. However, they've won three straight times. Tyler Phillips has been on the hill. He's 3-0 and on the season, 1-8 ERA, back-to-back, blanking the opponent in his start. So he's riding a hot right hand. And Wu, he's got great overall numbers for the Mariners, but it, he hasn't really been as good recently. You know, you look at his last, you know, four or five starts outside of the White Sox, he's been hit around a little bit. And sure enough, the Mariners, yes, four games over 500, but spot wise here, guys, this is the first game home off of an East Coast road trip, not necessarily bet on, and they struggled in Safeco. What, 0 oh, 3, their last three, they got swept by the Angels. They're just one in five, their last six home games. Hey, that offense hasn't been all that great. We'll see if their trade kind of acquisitions help them out. But in this spot, I think it's wrong team favorite. We get a good Phillies team plus price with a hot pitcher. Risk 100 to win 105. That's on the Phillies over the Mariners. Last game on the card. In recap, we got the A's plus 139 over the Dodgers. We get the Rays plus 140 over the Astros. Best bet for the show will be the Blue Jays over nine against the Yankees, plus 100 on that, and the Pittsburgh Pirates plus 115 over the Arizona Diamondbacks. So a lot of dogs here, guys. We're not laying any juice. Hopefully we can get uh, more winners than losers. But uh, either way, thanks for tuning in. Please smash that like button. We'll be back on Saturday. So stay tuned for that right here on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Until then, I'm Drew Martin. Thanks for tuning in. Cash those tickets.